Hey, welcome back guys, this is Ryan SolidWorks Tutorials with me. In this video, I'm going to teach you... Wait, put, put it put it somewhere nice, not there. What? No, no, a little bit higher, no. It's outside of the screen, man. Higher, a little bit above above your head. Not, not, not... Uh, okay, let's just make it... Oh, come on! Yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, you guys know, well, I'm going to create a casing for the gearbox that I created in the previous video last week. This guy doesn't care at all. He's, what are you looking at, man? Your hair? Did you even look in the back? You, you basically have a horn. What? You like thinking? Anyways, let's get to the video. I decided to continue creating something relevant to the previous part I made last week. So I came up with a case for this gearbox. So this is how the video goes. I started drawing in the assembly mode because I didn't know where to start. I didn't have any dimensions. So the best way I could think of is to draw some circles around my gears and turn those circles into an outer geometry by trimming the inside circles, you know, by trimming the inside entities being left with something like this and copy this, bring it into a new document, which I just did. And make it fully defined by the way because otherwise you might mess up your whole sketch and then I, I thought maybe I could start off by extruding this creating a block that kind of looks like the gear plus some offset and then see where it goes all right and then I went back I measured the thickness of each gear and then I realized okay this is how much I should extrude this then I went on to shell the gearbox to leave some room for the gears so at this point, I'm really confident everything is perfect. So I carry on by creating a frame around the outer geometry of the casing in order to leave some room for the fasteners, bolts and so on. Little did I know, or I, at least I forgot that some, some gears are stacked on top of each other. That's why the extrusion value is wrong. Now, next I thought, okay, you know what? We need some ball bearings. So we need to create some holes into the casing, leave some room for the ball bearings. But then I realized, wait, wait a minute, I don't know how big each ball bearings should be. So I went on online to skf.com, which I know they provide free CAD version for realistic ball bearings or any type of bearings they offer. So I tried to find out a bearing that is kind of suitable for the shaft that I had. My shaft was uh, 16 millimeters, so I went on to find something that provides casing for a 15 millimeter shaft, which I did find, and I tried to download it for my SolidWorks. First, I was doubling on maybe download a, a stepped file or something that I could open, but then I realized they even offer something native for SolidWorks over here. So I went on and downloaded it. Then I imported that file into SolidWorks. It looked perfect. I measured the outer diameter of my bearing as well as its width. So I could go and adjust the dimensions on the casing of my gearbox. I made the holes bigger and as, as well as made the thickness of the gearbox also thicker so I leave room for the casing but this is not the right practice I believe you only have to make the room the housing for the ball bearings a little bit higher but you should not make the wall thickness throughout your gearbox case thicker because it will end up with a much heavier case you're gonna have to well in in another word it's not practical okay if you really want to manufacture this component you don't want to spend that much stainless steel to create something so thick for no good reason so at this point i was lacking from some mechanical real knowledge i was never a good student in university i was normal i could you know survive but that was it but i know what to do in solidworks so my problem was i know how to design anything i want i just don't know what's right and what's wrong if you have that knowledge and you can combine it with solidworks knowledge then you're on fire now when i inserted the casing into the assembly mode it was the first time i realized wait a minute the gears are stacked on top of each other so the height of the gearbox casing is not perfect i'm gonna have to increase the extrusion on the back to you know provide some housing for the gears in the back which are stacked on top of each other so this is what i did i realized i have to go back and you know divide this outer surface divide this top surface on the casing by drawing some circles for each gear and then i use that created contours and extrude only those i'm going to extrude them into two different levels 
one level for the middle gear one level for the last gear and the level which he had for the top front gears on the on the left so we have three level actually not two look now all the gears are in the casing the casing still looks ugly i know we have a gap in the middle which is not really good i i will go on to fix this i will do my best but again it goes against my knowledge of creating or designing a gearbox i've never done this practically before uh there is another issue with the casing i mean not another there is a lot of issues with this casing but one of the biggest that i was facing was this was was to place the ball bearings into their hole they had enough room they had enough uh thickness to just sit into the casing that was fine but in reality you cannot just press your ball bearings from outside and leave it there in a gearbox because the gearbox is usually filled with oil and if you leave it there all the oil will leak in a fraction of a second and then that's a catastrophic thing that could happen but so i needed a hard stop on the back for my ball bearings not to pop up from the casing as well as some uh ceiling some some closure for the ceiling for the oil so I decided I measure the diameter of my shaft, not the ball bearing, and I go on to reduce the opening for each ball bearing, just reduce it down as much as a shaft could go in. So you could place the ball bearing into this housing from inside, but you cannot press it any further because they just reach the inner wall of the casing and they cannot be popped out. So over here, as you can see, I'm measuring the difference between the diameters. I'm going to close down the big diameter until I only leave enough room for the shaft. So you will not be able to see the balls from outside. Now, ball bearings are inside. Looks a little bit better. And all right, this is where I left off. All right, I came to this gap. I could not just come to, I could just, I couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that the gearbox should have a gap a necking like this it just doesn't feel right you know what i don't know what to do how about i just draw a straight line extrude it to the top and close it it at least looks less dodgy so after extruding it all the way to the top i i thought okay this is now a really thick piece of metal so let's just create some cavity in it by using offset entities from the outer edges and you know what make a pocket in there it makes it a little bit cheaper, a little bit lighter, and I came up with this. The edges were sharp, so I decided to round them up using filet, create kind of a triangle in the middle, and move on to the frame. Because now, after I thickened the wall thickness of the gearbox, I kind of lost the effect I had, which was supposed to be the framing around the outer geometry of my case to place the fasteners, to place the gosset, and etc. So I'm gonna have to kind of repeat this step again and create a framing around each level of the gearbox casing we have three levels at this point and then later on i would realize it's more challenging than i thought as you can see here i thought the best way would be to turn the outer geometry of the casing into an entity using convert entities while i'm drawing on the top flat surface of the casing and then use that line again use thin feature create a frame so after I did this, I realized there is another issue. I have a negative pocket here, which makes the casting or molding process impossible. So I decided, you know what? I spent so much time to create that triangular pocket. Let's just get rid of it. But I didn't want to go back and delete it, which would have been the right thing to do. But I've been working for at least one hour to this point. I was really tired and I knew if I delete this, I'm gonna face some future errors because some of the entities that I drew before are dependent on that. We learned about this. If you draw something on top of a feature and later on you delete that feature, you will lose whatever you drew on top of it. So instead of deleting it, I went on to create an extra feature only to fill this pocket, which works, but is not the right way to do it. Again, I was trying to just see if this idea is working because sometimes you are creating something from a drawing and you have structures to follow then you should do it right but in this case i wasn't even sure if i'm going in the right direction if if it's going to work so i didn't want to waste time on some some details like that for example we have a sharp edge here i decided to use chamfer to make it a little bit smooth and then again on the back sharp edge i went on to fill it the sharp edge make it a little bit more realistically looking 
Now I, I got rid of three of my mates, so I had to, or four of my mates, I had to delete them, use a multi-mate, and place the ball bearings again into their housing inside the case of the gearbox. Now they are right. And then next, it was time to create the other half of the casing. First, I thought I could create a block, extrude it, uncheck merge result, and subtract what I have from the block, and I will be left with the other half. But it turned out to be more challenging than I thought. It's not even working. It's not like that. Then I realized, okay, let's just create a copy of this shell, not to mess up with my assembly already. A lot of mates are dependent on what I have. After I created a copy of my casing, I called it number two, I went on to play with it and see how I can create the negative form of this casing. So I hadn't thoroughly expect, inspected this block system, so I went on to do it again, but it was not the right way to do it. So do not waste your time if you're going to create the negative form of your casing. This is not the right way, because let me show you how it looks. If you subtract your casing from this block, you will be left with a negative form inside a block which does you no good. This is not what you want. Turned out the solution is much easier than I thought. You just have to go and draw exactly the outer and inner, the outer and inner edges on top of your casing. Extrude it up to the next level. You have to do it three times. Make sure to uncheck merge result. Otherwise, your second half is going to be merged to the first half. You will end up with one block. Now I'm extruding the outer geometry like this and I'm only merging it to this second half so I can hide the first half and this is exactly the negative form I have all I have to do from this point on is to close this big and cap cavity with a simple extrusion like this then this will fit perfectly to the first half of my case after extruding it I realized I don't have a frame but it was time for me to check and see if it fits to the first shell so I went back to the assembly, inserted the component. I was really hopeful and it turned out it does. It does fit if you want to make it more complex, which I will in the next video, you can. But this is the best and easiest way to create a negative form for your gearbox casing. It was time to make a little bit of garnishing, you know, turn any sharp edge into have into curved edges. But it was not all over. You see we have one gear in the front and it does not have any ball bearing in the first casing because it's in front of the other gear. So we had to create the next housing for this specific gear on the other shell, on the green half of the case. So I went on to repeat the same procedure I did for the first four ball bearings, create a room for the shaft, create a hard stop so the ball bearing wouldn't go out, create the housing and so on. Again, at this point, I'm only playing around. I, ha I don't have any instruction or any drawing to follow. That's why it's hard for me to create something and teach you exactly how to do it. If you liked the video today, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm working on more similar and even more interesting concepts and I'm going to upload them soon. And if you're a SOLIDWORKS beginner and you're overwhelmed with all these stuff that I showed you, you don't know where to start, you're frustrated with all these options, make sure to check my online course, which is exclusive for SOLIDWORKS beginners with no prior experience, especially if you have some mechanical knowledge. Because if you have all the necessary knowledge to create a perfect gearbox and you just don't have the means to transform all the knowledge and experience you have from your mind, onto a computer, you have to fill that gap with a bridge. So to play my role, I'm providing that bridge for SOLIDWORKS users, those who are interested in learning SOLIDWORKS, because I believe it's a very capable software and very easy to use. I really enjoy working with the software. If this describes you, make sure to go to my online webinar, first watch the webinar, because on its own, it will provide you a lot of good values where it helps you to get a head start in SOLIDWORKS. You won't be so foreigner to it when you open the software for the first time. And if you liked it, I highly recommend you to check the course. Just get the course, try it for yourself, and you have one full month to make up your mind. If you didn't like the course or the course was not for you, you get a full refund, no questions asked. So you have nothing to lose.